Today's video is a reaction to a video posted by Kevin Samuels titled, Time to Drop a Dime on High Value Men. This is why far too many young guys want to be taken seriously like Icarus. And you get frustrated when old guys are telling you something. And it's like, well, uh, y'all don't know what the hell you're talking about. There's always been an Icarus. But they're not telling you because they're trying to hate on you. They're telling you because they don't want you to die. But again, so many of us have such a negative relationship with masculine authority and manhood in our own culture. We buck when a man older than us tells us anything because we are all men. Oh, <laughs> wrong. This video triggered me to turn his dime acronym into diet because I just had a conversation with a younger man who was on that women ain't shit red pill tip. Now, I don't mean triggered like this guy, okay, because he went off because I told him that if a, a man loses his woman to another man, it's his fault. And he got upset because he, and he said it's because the woman was low value, but he couldn't see that it would be his fault for picking a low value chick. And I don't mean triggered like the in the ghetto sense, like this young lady who I told that if she wants a high value man, she has to get rid of her tattoos. And she got upset and said, I'm dating a successful man and he likes my tattoos. You cross a line. OK, these conversations, along with Kevin's video, triggered me to sound the alarm for the black community, because, as he said earlier, winter is coming. Too many adults in our community still need to go on a diet, grow up and become mature men and women then perhaps we can restore the black community and build a black Wall Street in every major city across the country. So what is this diet, you ask? Let's talk about it. There's an old African proverb that says, if you enter a village where you cannot find any good women, it is filled with no good men. And the reason why so many guys are complaining about women's behavior and how they are out of control is because men are out of control. See, the women are out of order because the men are, are, are out of order. The reason why God set up our world as a, patri as a patriarchy is because he knew that if men stood in their God-ordained position, the women and children would be all right. Therefore, I'm not going to argue with any of you red pill cats in the comments. See, Proverbs chapter 26, verses 4 and 5 says, Never argue with a fool according to his foolishness, otherwise you'll become like he is. And that's because whenever a man argues with a wise man argue with a fool, the fool begins to believe that he's wise. Therefore, I'm only going to talk to the men who are ready to stand up as real men in their God-ordained position as a real man, a husband, a father, and a provider. Now, if men return to their rightful position, women will come out of their feminist condition. And why? It's because that's the nature of the beast. That's how women are. OK, now this is going to seem like it's off the point, but hang with me for a few minutes. OK, because I'm going I'm going somewhere with this. All right. Now, I saw a documentary about a group of young male elephants, about 13 or 14 years of age, who had turned violent and were going around killing rhinoceroses. And a group of scientists noticed these youngsters had gone into puberty earlier than they should have and were attributing their aggressive behavior to that condition. However, another group of scientists revealed that these adolescent elephants were part of a group that had been displaced. See, there was an overpopulation of elephants in one area of Africa, so these, deci these scientists decided to kill the older elephants and move their babies to another part of the continent. Now, the elephants that were separated from parental authority were the same guys who turned violent in their teens. The documentary explained that elephants have a, a highly ordered society, much like humans, right? The mother raises the babies and teaches them proper behavior with a whole range of motions, uh, emotions and uh, through nurturing. Now, most of this is done by touching and communicating with high pitched sounds that humans can't hear. But now a herd of elephants is comprised of females and very young males. And when the boys reach about the age of 12, they're forced out of the herd by the older females. And then the young males pair up with the older male uh, elephant who mentors them until, until they become mature males. And when the young male elephant is deprived of the nurturing and mentoring process, they grow up to be violent. Now these adolescent pachyderms also enter puberty and start having babies earlier than they should so to correct the situation, the, the scientists imported a few older male bull elephants to take control of the, the young guys 
And once the boys realized that they could not defeat the older males, it forced them to return to order and caused them to go out of premature puberty. Those peace was restored to that hostile environment. Now, this elephant documentary not only describes the problem with young black men perfectly, it also gives us some insight, brothers, into the BBWs in our community. If you've ever watched female elephants eat, you'll notice that they eat tree branches and leaves from trees that have no fruit. See, they wander from place to place, just eating everything they can, okay? But they are unfruitful. And have you ever asked yourself, what do BBWs, I mean, what, what do elephants produce? See, they don't produce anything or contribute anything to the food, food chains, and lions don't even eat one unless it's a baby. And have, I've never heard of anybody making elephant stew, so what do they do? The only thing they do is move from place to place eating. Then after they've consumed everything good from one tree, they go and eat from another tree. Now, have you ever looked at the BBWs and wondered why they're so big? Okay, they want a man who's in shape, so why don't they get in shape instead of staying big or getting bigger? And one of the reasons is depression, all right? Food is the thing that comforts them when they feel low or depressed. And another thing is the men that they eat, consume with, or, or consummate with, or consume. See, the Bible tells you repeatedly that men are like trees. So some trees produce fruit and others only have leaves. And Jesus cursed the tree that was supposed to have figs but only had leaves, right? And many BBWs are fat because they are eating, consuming, and having sex with proverbial trees or men that have no fruit. If they were eating fresh fruit every day, they would be slim and in good shape and like the, the type of men that they want to want them. Now, similar to the old African proverb, Dr. Will's proverb says, if you go in the community and you can only find big women, it has too many fruitless men. Kevin talked about dropping a dime on high value men. However, I believe that every man should be dropping a diet on fruitless men. See, fruitless men really want to be high value men, a real man and a leader of his family and community. So he must go on a diet. Now, everyone knows that diets don't work, okay? If you're overweight, you can diet and lose weight, but if you don't change your lifestyle, you'll put that weight right back on. Therefore, the type of diet that I have developed for fruitless men won't work if you don't change your lifestyle. You'll go on this diet for a little while, but if you don't change completely, you'll fall right back into your own old mentality, and consequently, you'll continue having trouble finding the right woman to marry and you'll continue to struggle to hold on to a woman and stay out of poverty. Brothers, I already know that some of these motherfuckers ain't hearing me, okay? So this knowledge is going to be just between me and you. You see, these cats don't understand that there's a difference between being a, uh, an adult male and being a man. And you can always tell an adult male by the things that he does and the words that come out of his mouth. If he has to declare that he's a man, it means that he knows deep down inside that he's only an adult adolescent. If a dude doesn't want to listen to the knowledge and wisdom of, of older men, it means that he still has childlike recalcitrance in his heart. And the evidence of his recalcitrance will always come out of his mouth. Just because you're older, that don't mean you're wiser. Just because you have a PhD, that don't mean you're smarter than me. I know a lot of educated fools, okay? You see, that's the attitude of an immature mind, right? Adult adolescents or man-sized boys don't understand that it does not cost anything to listen, but the price you pay comes after you listen and fail to take action. If you simply have the, the uh, discipline to listen, you can learn one of two things about from a man, what to do or what not to do. But to listen requires the discipline and maturity that most red pill cats lack, all right? Now, it's amazing to me how many of the red pill gents want to be considered high value. And since they don't listen to older men, they don't know that getting to be high value, a high value man is one thing, but maintaining that status is a whole other ball game. In order to remain a high value man, you must be, you must maintain a steady diet of these four things, discipline, integrity, ethics, and tenacity. Remaining a high value man requires that you be on this diet and this diet requires you to abstain from doing or having things just because you can, okay? Just because you can, it does not mean that you should. You should not sleep with every woman that you come in contact with just because you can, all right? Men who that, that are high value have a vision for their lives and they write the vision as a script for their lives and they never deviate from that script. 
They understand that you cannot be high value without a script because people won't be able to see you as high value. See, the people who inspect you won't be able to respect you as high value if they don't see you on script or the same way every day. You see, that type of consistency requires you to be on a daily diet of discipline, integrity, ethics, and tenacity. There are only two places besides the military that a boy can learn discipline, either the playpen or the state pen. Men who do not learn discipline from a man at home have a greater chance of being forced to learn discipline from the men in prison. Iron sharpens iron brothers, therefore only men have the capacity to teach, to, to teach boys how to become disciplined as men. Another man must teach a man why it's important to not react immediately when provoked. You see, a real man understands that reacting emotionally is a luxury that only women and children can afford. A real man understands that he, if he has to retaliate or get revenge, revenge is a meal best served cold rather than in the heat of passion. Even in the defense of his family, a man must have the intestinal fortitude to remain disciplined in the face of opposition or adversities. Now, the majority of men who are in prison for violent crimes, they committed an act as an emotional response to something someone did or said. They had no discipline, so they ended up in prison as a result of making a hasty decision. Rashness, my brothers, is the parent of misfortune and causes men to lose their freedom and their fortune. Now, I have never seen a man fall into misfortune or lose a fortune that did not make a hasty decision or take an undisciplined action. Men who react emotionally and hastily are dangerous to society because they have too much power in their hands, okay? We can destroy things very quickly, brothers. Therefore, men must develop the discipline to respond to every situation or threat appropriately. Integrity is a state of complete mental, emotional, intellectual, moral, and ethical development where a man becomes single that is whole within himself and connected in one with God. See, integrity is, is tested by the words of a man's mouth, the consistency of, it, of his actions, and the way that he responds in times of tough temptation. See, a man has integrity when his word is always true, he always do what he says he's going to do, and he can remain faithful to his wife when being tempted by a very fine cutie with a real nice booty. See, his integrity is proven once tested, and he is found to be strong in his commitment to God himself, his wife, and his family. A man retains his integrity at all costs because he understands that integrity is more easily kept than recovered. A man with integrity is not phony. He is actually uh, who he appears to be. And like Popeye, he says, I am what I am, okay? A man with integrity is not pretentious, and you will find him to have consistency of personality and character even when he's under pressure. This man with, uh, that has integrity remains steadfast and unmovable because he has a high level of self-discipline. A man of ethics has powerful or uh, a positive moral quality that is beneficial to his family and community. His ethical character makes him a strong, powerful leader. All right. And other men will follow him because they want to, not because they have to, because the ethical, uh, because ethical men are winners. And see, ethical men are also courageous and intelligent decision makers. They are often well spoke of, highly regarded, and men that have the capacity to help other men make their families wealthy. And other men love to roll with them, okay? Because ethical men understand that a candle does not lose anything when it lights another candle, it only spreads more light. Therefore, he's eager to help other men become the best that they can be and increase their productivity. And see, a man of high quality ethics is also the type of guy who conforms to the moral order of the universe. He, is, he has a praiseworthy character. He advances prosperity or well-being. He is useful or beneficial to others. He has economic utility or he satisfies an economic desire. He has the qualities to reach his destiny or fulfill a purpose. And he is an example through which uh, bad men are revealed to good women. Men with tenacity have the character and qualities of a king, a warrior, and a mentor. These qualities, ladies, are what make a man worth marrying. And without them, it will be difficult for him to be a good leader, a good husband, a good father, and a provider. It's crucial for men then to be tenacious because under the law of natural selection, where we get maxims such as uh, winner take all or survival of the fittest, a man has no right to anything that he cannot defend. If he cannot defend a wife, he has no right to one. If he cannot defend his home, he has no right to one. If he cannot defend his money, he can expect it to be taken. 
Therefore, two of the primary qualities that a man must possess, which come from tenacity, are that of a king and a warrior. And when it comes to defending his family or his property, a man with tenacity has the model, I will win or die trying. Now, selfless, a selfless man is one who believes that it's important to place the needs of others before his own. And this quality drives some women crazy because they can't argue with him. OK, in every case where it doesn't make a difference in terms of taking him off his path to destiny or off his plan financially, he is going to let her have her way. And this quality also drives red pill cats crazy. OK, because they think that this is some simp shit and that's because they're not mature yet. See, selflessness may make him seem weak to his woman when he won't fight for what he wants. However, his woman doesn't understand that what he wants is for her to have what she wants. See, he does not fight uh, fight her because he's in the power position. And brothers, selflessness can appear to be weakness to women until they realize that their man is actually operating from a position of strength. And selflessness is what the Bible calls meekness, right? Which means to have, have one's power under control. See, Jesus could have called down 10,000 angels to help him down from the cross, but because he was meek, he kept his power under control in order to complete his mission and please his father. You see, a meek or selfless man's desire is to please those he loves, okay, in his quest to reach his destiny spiritually and financially and maintain peace and harmony within his family, then he can get his woman to submit to him completely and to help him create wealth for their family exponentially. Now, Psalm 37, 11 says, the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. And the word peace in this context, brothers, mean to be whole within oneself with nothing, with nothing missing and nothing broken or to be in absolute abundance with everything that you can imagine. Now, selfless is also synonymous with being egoless. Our ultimate mission in life as men is to become egoless or ego free and awaken to the reality of who God created us to be. Every child is born prideful and selfish. Therefore, we must all be reborn out of our selfish, self-centered or prideful ego state into an egoless state when, when, when we wake up and become conscious to who we really are. Right. Now, the problem is causes most men to struggle with being captive to their ego, and this ego prevents them from learning how to break free. And in order for a man to actually grow up into the man that God created him to be, he will need another man to sharpen his iron. But this puts a man into a catch-22 situation because he must override his ego in order to receive that man's wisdom. And if he can't receive the wisdom, he must tailor it to fit or conform to his individual life and family, then he can be truly free to experience life and love in the abundance of peace. Now, for the men who are still watching, okay, because I know a lot of these cats clicked off, I put this knowledge near the end of this video because I don't want cats who, who want to be entertained uh, rather than trained to have it. Now, fear is the result of a lack of knowledge. The three greatest fears in life are fear of death, the fear of change, and a fear of the unknown. People that have a fear of flying, they ain't really afraid to fly. They're afraid to die, all right? They're so scared that the plane will crash, but that's because they don't know that more people die in auto accidents every year than in airline incidents. The lack of knowledge and operating on uh, false knowledge is the monster that is created, f creating fear and separation between black men and women also, all right? But in order to eliminate this fear and to change our current condition, we must first change our minds concerning what we think about the opposite sex. And it's imperative that we purge ourselves of the prejudice, pre preconceived notions and stereotypes that we hold, such as all men are dogs or women ain't shit. OK, and those of us who want to be married must also change the way that we see ourselves and our general uh, fears about marriage. And we have to understand that the fear of change causes people to become frozen in their present uh, position, condition, or status and learn to overcome that fear. You see, most people would expect the opposite to be true. However, people in the professional class have a harder time finding someone to marry than those in the blue collar uh, class. And why? It's because they have unrealistic standards due to fear and their fear makes them refuse to change. You see, the reason they got uh, the education in the first place is due to the fear of being left with nothing so they don't realize that their advanced education reinforces their fear, which makes them too educated for their own good. 
Therefore, their degrees and the social dribble that they ascribe to from magazines, radio, and reality TV indoctrinates them into believing that they have the knowledge that they need to build an adequate defense against being left while working for a marriage to succeed. Their fear combined with cognitive dissonance makes, more, makes it more difficult for them to find someone with whom they can form that perfect union. And the biggest problem that plagues them more than being left is their fear of change. You see, professional women, they have a sense of their personal power, so they are afraid that they will have to relinquish it to be in relationship with a real man. However, ladies, the Bible says that perfect love casts out fear. So in order for you to get that perfect love, it requires taking a risk. And when a real man steps to you, he knows that he's taking a risk too. But he decided to overcome his fear and take the risk of trying to love you and hopefully you'll be able to see his vulner vulnerability, can't say that word, okay, and recognize that he's offering love sincerely and the power of that love will cast out your fear suddenly. Now, Kevin Samuels has been warned for a few weeks now that winter is coming and those of you who are still single or alone when winter hits, you will be left out in the cold. We well, see two can live cheaper than one and if you don't get booed up, you might be jacked up. So ladies, you have to drop that feminist, I can do bad all by myself nonsense because you will be by yourself. And men, you have to drop that women ain't shit, massage it as nonsense and make better choices. Now it's not that all women ain't shit, it's just the ones that you pick, okay? You have trouble picking the one that's right for you because you haven't let a wiser older man sharpen your iron for you. Therefore, it's very important for every man to prepare for winter by going on a diet of discipline which is a, a, a diet of discipline, integrity, ethics, and tenacity so that you can be armed against marriage failure and financial loss. Well, that's all that I have for now. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, share this video with your, share this video with your family and friends, and I'll be back with something new that nobody told you. Until then, remember that God loves you, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it, and I'll see you next time on Maximizing Fatherhood.